Anyway, here's the moment. Let's play the clip. Here's the moment um, that everyone was talking about. Let's now turn to an issue that's come up in the last 48 hours. Senator Sanders, CNN reported yesterday that, and Senator Sanders, Senator Warren confirmed in a statement that in 2018, you told her that you did not believe that a woman could win the election. Why did you say that? Well, as a matter of fact, I didn't say it. Uh, and I don't want to waste a whole lot of time on this because this is what Donald Trump and maybe some of the media want. Uh, anybody knows me knows that it's incomprehensible that I would think that a woman could not be president of the United States. Go to YouTube today. There's a video of, the, of me 30 years ago talking about how a woman could become president of the United States. In 2015, I deferred, in fact, to Senator Warren. There was a movement to draft Senator Warren to run for president. And you know what? I said, stayed back. Senator Warren decided not to run, and I did, I did run afterwards. Hillary Clinton won the popular vote by three million votes. How could anybody in a million years not believe that a woman could become president right, of right the here. United States? So here's the thing, right? And this is the so that I, I told you that's the benefit that that Bernie Sanders has, right? That he can separate himself from other people. The problem Bernie Sanders has, which I've been saying through this whole campaign, is for whatever reason, he does not have the killer in him. Now that was, by the way, that answer was pretty good. It was pretty good, pretty forceful, pretty it's incomprehensible that I would say this. I wanted Elizabeth Warren to run for president before I was even running. Hillary Clinton won the popular vote. It's ridiculous to say a woman can't be president. Oh, okay. You know, uh, again, in the world of democratic, you know, primary politics, pretty good answer. But don't you see where it's missing a little something? This is the kind of like autistic Bernie Sanders problem that he has where he's not able to actually take on other people. Look, Bernie, here's the reality. If what you're saying is true, right, that you didn't say this and it's incomprehensible that you would say anything like this, well then somebody, okay, another human being, let's pretend for a second you're a human being, another human being who you encourage to run for president who's saying that they're your friend is lying about you smearing you, fucking calling you a sexist by implication three weeks before the first primary just for political purposes. So someone who's a friend of yours, who you've been there for, you've done good things for, is fucking trying to ruin you for strictly political purposes. So the response there isn't, can't just be this like, this is the autistic part where it's like, it's like, no, I wouldn't say that. I could never say that. What are you talking about? It's like, Shouldn't the response be, of course I didn't say that, and I can't believe Elizabeth Warren would lie about me for political purposes. If this is true, why didn't you say this about me three years ago when you're saying I said it? No, this is, you know what I mean? Like there's no, there isn't, because it was an opportunity for him to flip it around from being a challenge on his integrity to be like, no, this is, a, this is about your integrity. I didn't say that, and you're lying about me. Is the implication that I'm a sexist? Because of this, of course I didn't say this. If that's true, then why was I supporting you for running for president in 2015? Why did I endorse Hillary Clinton or whatever? You know, he could go in, in different ways. But maybe he doesn't want to remind people that he endorsed that nightmare, murderous, blood-soaked lizard person. But whatever. Um, anyway, then the other thing you realize is that Bernie Sanders, you know, which is, has come up a lot, is how much against uh, Bernie Sanders the media is. And watch this next exchange. It's get, CNN's gotten a lot of heat for this. It's pretty remarkable. And let me be very clear. If any of the women on this stage or any of the men on this stage win the nomination, I hope that's not the case. I hope it's me. <laughs> but if they do, I will do everything in my power to make sure that they are elected in order to defeat the most dangerous president in the history of our country. So, Senator Sanders, Senator Sanders, I do want to be clear here. You're saying that you never told Senator Warren that a woman could not win the election. That is correct. Senator Warren? What did you think when Senator Sanders told you a woman could not win the election? <laughs> All right, let's pause I disagreed. it right there. Isn't that fucking incredible? That they would literally just go, so you're saying you never said this. That's right, I never said it. Elizabeth Warren, when he said that, how'd you feel? That's, her, that's their next question. It's not as if this was three questions later and that happened to come up. It's the, the next second after Bernie Sanders says that, they just uh, basically jump in and start arguing, well, we, we have to take Elizabeth Warren's word for this. And Bernie Sanders laughs, and the whole crowd laughs. And this is when the media overplays their hand 
with their obvious, like, you have a dog in this fight strategy. This was not a mistake. This was very clearly intentional. And when everyone's laughing, that that's a kind of a bad sign. And they go, oh, yeah, we see how you just set that up. And then, of course, uh, Elizabeth Warren also just plays into it and just takes it as a given. Well, I disagreed. So no one's even going to acknowledge that the guy is saying, I didn't say this. And even then, Elizabeth Warren, if, if he did say this and he's saying he didn't, you should be like, Bernie, you're not telling the truth. You absolutely said this to me. None of that. But then Elizabeth Warren goes into this moment, and we'll see why Elizabeth Warren is so terrible. Bernie is my friend, and I am not here to try to fight with Bernie. But look, this question about whether or not a woman can be president has been raised, and it's time for us to attack it head on. Um, and I think the best way to talk about who can win is by looking at people's winning record. So can a woman beat Donald Trump? Look at the men on this stage. Collectively, they have lost 10 elections. <laughs> the only people on this stage who have won every single election that they've been in are the women, Amy so and true. me. So true. And the only person on this stage who has beaten an incumbent Republican any time in the past 30 years is me. And here's what I know. The real danger that we face as Democrats is picking a candidate who can't pull our party together or someone who takes for granted big parts of the Democratic constituency. We need a candidate who will excite all parts of the Democratic Party, bring everyone in, and give everyone a Democrat to believe in. That's my plan, and that is why I'm going to win. Senator Klobuchar. Thank you. All right. Senator so uh, there's Elizabeth Warren's response. Now, of course, this gets a big pop from the crowd, because anytime you do this kind of girl power, we've won elections, blah, 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 it's like, okay, Elizabeth Warren, you winning elections in a liberal district doesn't really prove anything about what you can do to Donald Trump in a national election. But again, just realize that this is what she's got. This is this is the now a, there are a lot of these things that get big applause from the people who go to a democratic debate. But is that really going to sway voters who care about meat and potatoes issues? You know, th this is the, the fucking first off it's just so like so ugh, slimy for her to say Bernie's my friend. I'm not trying to pick a fight with Bernie, but it's time we addressed this question. Who's asking this question? You inserted this question into the record just so you could give this canned bullshit response to it. Now, Bernie Sanders is differentiating himself, uh, himself on some issues of actual substance. This is just fucking nonsense. And I, I really I don't think it's a winning hand for Elizabeth Warren to uh, to be playing. But. We'll see what happens because the media is clearly against Bernie Sanders. The DNC was against him last time. He doesn't really seem to be trying to win, or if he is, he doesn't have that killer to really go for it. Um, you know, look, Bernie Sanders has gone this whole campaign without pointing out the obvious. Like if you were Bernie Sanders' campaign manager and you were like, okay, we're, we're thinking about what speeches we're going to give or what talking points we're going to deliver, the first one you'd think he still hasn't mentioned this whole time, which is obvious. You guys cheated me last time. You guys cheated me last time and decided Hillary Clinton was going to be the nominee. And look what you did. You gave the White House to Donald Trump. I would have beaten him. It's my time now. The whole party's moved to me. We're going to beat him. All these people are saying they want to, you know, th this, these like democratic socialist policies. Who really has the credibility to say they're actually, you know, the, the real democratic socialists? It's me. Like that's obviously his selling point. And he just refuses to make it. And he's left it very close. He's still leading in the Iowa polls, but it's very, very close. And as you know, I've learned in the Ron Paul days, if it's uh if you leave it close, they can uh they can cheat you out of that shit. So I'd I'd say be careful. That would be my uh my message to Bernie Sanders. Now the other thing that I just want to mention um before we uh we wrap up. There there was this other thing that I think might be really damaging for Bernie Sanders if he were to win in a general election. And that was this Project Veritas uh, video that came out recently. I was going to play the video on the show. Oh, you know what? Even before I get into that, uh, let me say, the other thing that was really weird is that uh, that a lot of people were watching is that Elizabeth Warren uh, refused to shake Bernie Sanders' hand 
after the uh, debate, and they seem to have a pretty awkward, tense uh, uh, little interaction there. So, you know, I, I, it doesn't make sense to play the video on the show because, you know, like 90-something percent of our audience listens audio, and there's no audio in it. But, you know, you can go watch it on YouTube, and she very clearly refuses to shake his hand, and they have like a weird confrontation uh, afterward. Um, so anyway, there, maybe there's some some beef there. But uh, the other thing that I was going to say is this Project Veritas video that came out, which I'm also not going to play on the show just because the audio quality is so bad. It doesn't it doesn't make sense. But Project Veritas, you know, they do all this like guerrilla undercover journalism where they secretly record people. So they got a couple uh, members uh, of like high up members of Bernie Sanders campaign. And uh, woo, was it creepy what one of the guys was talking about? And he was basically saying that we need uh, re-education camps in America um, to train the, quote, Nazis to, you know, to not be Nazis anymore. Um, and, of course, Nazi is defined by anyone you don't – is defined as anyone you don't like, according to these people. Um, so he's like, basically, that's why we have Donald Trump, uh, because of the Nazis. And then he actually starts talking about the Soviet gulags and how they really weren't so bad. And, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, you know, uh, you know, people give the, the Soviet gulags bad names because of what he said, CIA propaganda. Um, but really, you know, the Soviet, Soviet gulags were just for re-education. As he said, you know, you take some rich guy and you make him work every day in the gulags and, and then he understands what it's like to be the working class. It's about the creepiest thing you'll ever fucking hear. And this guy is saying this with all sincerity. Now, normally, in normal politics, this would be the type of thing that's like, Everyone agrees we won't bring this up. Um, however, uh, Donald Trump doesn't play by those rules, and I think this w could really hurt Bernie Sanders. I think there's going to be a lot of, especially in the internet age with Donald Trump running, there's going to be a lot of these videos where this this is played with montages of Bernie Sanders praising every authoritarian socialist regime in the last, you know, whatever, 300 years, however long he's been alive. Um, and uh, that I, I just think it's, first off, it's terrifying. And, and it also... It gets to the point of what I was trying back when I was arguing with Sarwalk and when I've argued with a lot of these other left libertarians. It's like people have – and even just to the last episode, right, when I was saying the point that I was making where I said, well, why is it, it – which, which uh, our guest John agreed with me on. Why is it if I were to have Pat Buchanan on and say I have the great Pat Buchanan coming in studio today or I were to have, you know – um whoever, I, I were to have Noam Chomsky on or someone like that and say, the great Noam Chomsky is coming in today. Or I were to say, you know, whatever, the, you know, whoever left us, insert them there. Um, why is it that I would get way more shit for saying that about Pat Buchanan, even though he clearly is way closer to the libertarian position than Noam Chomsky or than Jimmy Dore or than, you know, um, Tulsi Gabbard or someone like that. Well, why would I get more shit for saying that about Pat Buchanan? And he agreed that I would, and no one really has an answer for that. Why is that? And here's the answer, okay? This is it, because the propaganda, which we've all been propagandized into to some degree, and which Nick Sarwak openly said when he was on my show, is he said, um, racists are bad people, but communists are misguided. See, this is the structure that you have to exist in. And a lot of people just implicitly or without really thinking it through, just agree with this. They go, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, the thing is that Pat Buchanan's a bad person, whereas Noam Chomsky or, um, you know, whoever, Tulsi Gabbard, might just be misguided on economics. Now, I'm not saying Noam Chomsky or Tulsi Gabbard are a bad person, but I don't think Pat Buchanan is either, you know? Like, I think they're all misguided on a few issues, and Pat Buchanan is way better on more issues than they are. But if you're going to buy into this logic... Uh, first off, the left is always going to win because obviously you'll always prefer someone who's a little misguided to someone who's evil. And also, it's ignoring a lot of leftist history. Like, how much history of leftists do you need before you stop giving them this pass? Is the 20th century not enough to say, ah, I don't know if all these leftists are just misguided? I think some of them might be downright evil. And that's where you see this shit. And, th and that's why I really thought Project Veritas did such a great service by exposing this. It's like, oh yeah, look at that. That's not misguided, man. If you're saying the gulags aren't so bad and we need to throw every Trump supporter into a re-education camp, that is fucking evil, terrifying, authoritarian communism. That's what that shit is. It's not misguided. It's fucking evil. Communism is a lot more than misguided. It's the most evil ideology ever. And I submit the 20th century as a, a exhibit A.
And I think I could uh, come back with a, uh, a guilty verdict just from that.